Did you know there's a section in the U.S. Treasury yield curve that most accurately predicts economic downturns? Yep, this part of the yield curve, the difference between yields on 10-year treasuries and three-month bills, has accurately predicted every U.S. recession since 1955. Now, when it's gone down below zero, a recession has followed over the next two years. Hey there, thrill seekers of financial wisdom. Welcome to another episode of Fun Financial Insights. For a record-breaking 658 days, the yield curve has been playing limbo, challenging the economic status quo. That is, it has continuously been below zero since early July 2022. But what does this mean for you, me, and the future of our wallets? Well, stay tuned as we unravel the tangled threads of interest rates, bond yields, and the economic prophecies they foretell. Imagine a graph that tells a story, not with words, but with lines and slopes. This, my friends, is the yield curve. It's a line that plots the yields or interest rates of bonds with equal credit quality with differing maturity rates. All right, so why should you care? Well, because the slope of this curve can predict future interest rate charges and ultimately economic activity. It's like having a financial crystal ball. So let's break it down. When we talk about the yield curve, we're looking at the relationship between short-term and long-term interest rates. A normal yield curve slopes upwards, showing low yields for short-term bonds and higher yields for long-term bonds. Now, this is the market's way of saying, hey, we believe in the economy's growth, so we expect more reward for waiting longer. But what happens when this curve inverts and short-term rates exceed long-term rates? Well, that's when investors raise a brow. An inverted yield curve slopes downward and corresponds to periods of economic recession. It's the market whispering, trouble may be brewing. And here's a fun fact. Yield curve rates are published on the U.S. Department of the Treasury's website each trading day. So you can actually check out this financial forecast for yourself. But wait, there's more. So investors use this yield curve to make predictions about the economy to inform their investment decisions. So a steep yield curve implies strong economic growth, often accompanied by higher inflation and interest rates. Now let's dive deeper into the world of bonds. A bond represents a fixed income instrument that's like an IOU. When you buy a bond, you're lending money to the issuer, whether it's a corporation or a government entity. In return, they promise to pay you back with interest. It's like a financial love letter, if you will. So let's start with the basics. A bond is essentially a loan. When you buy a bond, you're lending money to an entity could be Uncle Sam for a treasury bond, a state for a municipal bond, or a company for a corporate bond. And here's Bond 101 for you. The issuer promises to pay you back the principal, also known as the face value, on a set maturity rate. But that's not all. They also pay you interest, known as the coupon, at regular intervals. All right, now for the fun part, the coupon rate, right? This is the interest rate the issuer agrees to pay you. It's fixed, which means it doesn't change even if the markets go topsy-turvy. So if your bond has a 5% coupon rate on a $1,000 bond, you'll get 50 bucks a year. Ka-ching! But wait, there's a bit of a plot twist. Bond prices and interest rates have an epic love-hate relationship. When interest rates go up, Bond prices go down and vice versa. Bonds are also tradable. That's right, you can sell them before they mature. If interest rates have fallen since you bought the bond, you might just sell it for more than you paid. There's something you need to know, however, and that's credit risk. This is the chance the issuer might default, and inflation risk where rising prices could eat into your returns. We'll discuss this in detail, so keep watching. So now let's talk about short-term and long-term interest rates, how they're set, and what they affect. So since interest rates and bond prices have an inverse relationship, let's understand these interest rates, okay? On the one hand, we have speedy short-term rates, and on the other, the enduring long-term rates. Short-term interest rates are set by the central banks, like the Federal Reserve in the U.S., these rates are the heartbeat of the economy, influencing everything from your credit card interest to the rate on your savings account. 
Now, when the economy is overheating, central banks hike up rates to cool it down. And when it's sluggish, they cut rates to give it a caffeine kick. On the other hand, the long-term rates are set by the market and influenced by factors like inflation expectations and global economic conditions. So in the bond market, long-term rates are determined by the yield on government bonds. Think of it as a popularity contest for countries' debt. The cooler the country's economic outlook, the lower the yield and vice versa. But what do these rates affect? Well, short-term rates impact how much you pay on short-term loans and the interest you earn on deposits. Long-term rates, on the other hand, shape the cost of long-term borrowing, the mortgages and business loans. They also affect pension funds and insurance companies who rely on these rates to plan for the future. Now, the way these relate to the yield curve is that when short-term rates are higher than long-term rates, we get our infamous inverted yield curve. Coming up, we're going to decode the yield curve like never before. It's a story of ups and downs, twists and turns, and it might just change the way you think about investing. If you're enjoying the ride, smash that like button and drop us a comment below. Do share your thoughts and your questions. We would really appreciate it. Now, let's see how understanding the yield curve can influence our investing. Reading the yield curve is like understanding a secret language. It plots the interest rates of bonds with similar credit quality, but different maturity dates. The shape it takes, well, now that's where the story unfolds. See it slope upwards? That's a normal yield curve, signaling economic growth and higher interest rates on the horizon. It's like the sun rising on a prosperous day. And when it's flat, well, that's a flat yield curve, hinting at economic uncertainty. Investors are unsure, so short-term and long-term rates are playing a game of who blinks first. And when it flips upside down like it has over 600 days now, we've got an inverted yield curve. This is the fortune teller of finance, often predicting a recession. By comparing the yields of different maturities, investors can gauge the market's pulse. A steep curve? Confidence. A flat or inverted? caution or concern. And right now, we may have a reason to be concerned. But how well can we trust the yield curve? Well, let's see if it has correctly predicted the economy in the past. Throughout history, the yield curve has been like a financial oracle, whispering predictions about the economy. When it inverts, it's often a prelude to recession. That's like a stroll down memory lane, right? The yield curve has inverted several times before economic downturns. It has a remarkable track record predicting recessions with eerie accuracy. In the early 1980s, the U.S. was in a recession. The yield curve inverted in late 1980 and early 1981, and the recession lasted until November 82. That's nearly two years of economic hardship. Fast forward to 2006, right before the 2008 financial crisis, and yeah, the yield curve inverted, and what followed was the worst recession since the Great Depression. The curve stayed inverted for over a year, signaling long-term trouble. And who could forget the recent inversion in 2019? It was almost a year before the COVID-19 pandemic struck, leading to a global economic slowdown. These inversions varied in duration, but they all shared one thing. They were the harbingers of economic downturns. The yield curve doesn't lie. It bends and twists, reflecting the market's deepest fears and hopes. How might you use the yield curve for investment decisions? Well, let's set our course with some actual data. The yield curve gives us a snapshot of the market's expectations for interest rates and economic growth. But how do we use this to make investment decisions? Well, when the yield curve is stable or upward sloping, some investors employ a roll-down strategy. They buy bonds and sell them as they roll down towards maturity, capitalizing on the price increase as yields fall. This strategy can be profitable in a stable rate environment. For example, if you had bought a 10-year Treasury bond in 2023 with a yield of 2.5% and sold it five years later, you might have enjoyed both the interest payments and a capital gain. But what about when the curve inverts, like it did before the 2008 financial crisis, signaling economic distress? Short-term rates were higher than long-term rates, a sign to tread carefully. 
In such times, you might shift towards short-term bonds or defensive assets that are traditionally more resilient during downturns. It's about weathering the storm with minimal damage. Fast forward to today and we're seeing an inverted yield curve again. It's been inverted for a record 658 days as of April 2024. This prolonged inversion is a red flag urging investors to be cautious and prioritize capital preservation. Given this data, you might consider rebalancing your portfolio. Increase your holdings in short-term bonds or sectors that historically outperform during economic slowdowns. Think healthcare, utilities, or consumer staples. While the yield curve is a powerful tool, it's not infallible. It's one of the main indicators that savvy investors use to gauge the market's temperature and make informed decisions. Now, the S&P 500 has hit a series of record highs, with the latest peak reaching 5,010.60, up by 0.87%. But the yield curve has been inverted for a staggering 658 days. Well, what does this mean for our beloved index? Well, the yield curve suggests that the rally might be on borrowed time. If history repeats itself, we could see a correction when the market aligns with the economic indicators. For instance, before the 2008 financial crisis, the yield curve inverted and we saw the S&P 500 eventually plummet. Fast forward to today and we're seeing a similar pattern. Caution is the word. Look at the divergence. The S&P 500 is climbing, but the yield curve is telling a different story. It's a classic case of what goes up must come down. Perhaps it's time to strategize. It might also be wise to secure profits and rebalance towards more defensive assets. Diversify to mitigate potential risks. Remember, when the yield curve inverts, it's like a compass pointing us towards caution. But when it's normal, we set sail confidently, eyes on the horizon. So, my financial crew, keep your portfolios balanced, your minds curious, and your hearts resilient. The markets sway, but our knowledge anchors us. If you found this episode insightful, hit that like button, subscribe for more financial wisdom, and share it with fellow investors.